Hi, and welcome to this uh, short overview of uh, MSC Adams and in particular its flexible body dynamics capability. So Adams is a mechanism simulation or a machine design package uh, used widely across many industries for designing things that uh, have moving components to them. It originally comes from the car industry from designing suspension, but it can be used in all kinds of things, landing gear, robots, uh, hard disk drives, washing machines, you name it, it's been used in them. So many times this kind of uh, machine might be designed using the kinematics package inside your CAD system, but as you'll see in this example, um, that can get you in trouble quite easily. So we have this, this uh, robot, it's got a, uh, a riveting tool on the end there, and it goes through a cycle um, of moving to positions, performing an operation and then returning back to the start here. If I look at that in the post processor and look at the, um, this is the velocity of the, the tip of the, the robot hand. So you can see it moves, gets to the stationary position and stops and, and holds dead. So you get very ostensibly very accurate positioning, moves again, fixes, moves again, fixes, moves again, fixes. Now, um, there's, there's potential issues with this. If you simulate this in a dynamic environment, um, you, you have the effect of vibration of components. Now, if you do this in kinematics or you do this in rigid body dynamics, you don't get any flexibility to the parts. Um, one of the huge advantages of Adams is the ability to add flexibility to individual parts or all the parts in the model to get their, their dynamic characteristics more accurately. So the way this is done is through something called uh, component mode synthesis uh, or Craig Bampton um, modes. So basically what we do, we're, we're going to take this component here and make it flexible. Um, so if I go into this one I prepared earlier, um, what we do is we identify the points where it's connected into the rest of the model. So we've got uh, two interface points at those joints there, and we create a mesh, and then we run it through a finite element solver, uh, in this case, Nastran, uh, to calculate a, a combination of the rigid body modes of the structure, and we can just click through those quickly. So you have six uh, nominal zero hertz rigid body modes, now we start getting into flexible modes. So there's, there's one here at 260 hertz, uh, 322 hertz, etc. So what we have uh, is a combination of the natural resonant frequencies of the structure constrained at the, the interface points, but we also have what we call constraint modes, which is um, representing the static stiffness of the part. So a constraint mode would basically, let's say, hold uh, five of the six degrees of freedom at this interface point, and then six here, uh, and then apply a unit force to the, the single free one and get a, a mode shape that reflects a, a unit force applied in that direction. It then repeats it for all the degrees of freedom, so you would get um, six from this end, six from that end. Um, and then when, it's, when, when Adam solves, it creates the, the flexible shape at any given time step from a linear superposition of the modes that you've given it. So you need to be careful that your, your modal frequencies are within the range of the operation of the system. So if you've got uh, driving frequencies from a motor, let's say, at 400 hertz, you need to make sure actually that you're going up to about 800 hertz. So a rule of thumb is, is twice the range of the driving frequency um, to do that. So, so that's enough of the maths. Um, let's look at how we do this. So we can make this member here flexible um, by importing from an FE department, but, but one, of the, uh, one of the beauties of Adams is the ability to do that uh, within the software. So I can just go in and I can click on the part and make it flexible. Um, I tell it how many modes I want. I'm just going to go for, for 25 in this instance. I want a stress analysis and I'm going to look at my advanced settings here. So I'm going to set the size 25 millimeters um, and 
and I'm just going to go in here to set up the attachments. So it goes through and it throws a mesh onto the structure. Um, so I can then go through and def basically define um, by finding the attachments. It, it automatically finds the two attachment points. Um, when I click on one here, it, it indicates where it is. And I can go in and I can say, um, for instance, give me the 20 closest nodes to the point at which that that, um, that interface is, is located in the model. I have other options. I can do a spherical, so grab all of the nodes within a certain spherical diameter, or cylindrical, um, where I can say, you know, the, the, the base and tip and radius of a cylinder, and it will grab all the nodes within it. But for purposes of this, I'm just going to use the closest nodes method. Um, I can visualize the RBE that it creates. Um, that's a, a term um, basically referring to a, a rigid element that's created here to basically tie the nodes back to the nodes on the mesh back to the interface point. And then I can do the same um, for the other one. So I'm just going to go, I can pick nodes in this instance. I can come in, I can pick individual nodes and then transfer IDs like that again. Um, and then if I hit OK, it will uh, compose a Nastran input deck, run that Nastran input deck, and then re-import the flexible body automatically um, using the interface points I have to, to uh, hook it back up into the model. I'm not going to do that now. Um, for the purposes of this, I'm going to click again to another one that I created earlier. So we have a flexible member here. And because I requested stress analysis, I can get contour plots of, of von Mises stress on this part. So as it moves, you can see animation of the stresses. Stresses are pretty low in this instance. I think they're well, less, than, less than 50 megapascals. Um, but the important thing you can kind of see in the animation is there's a bit of vibration going on. And we'll be able to see that in a second when I um, load an actual plot. Um, and I'll explain why that would be important to you. So if I load a plot and I want to look at the pin center of mass velocity, you can see that... Um, the, the robot accelerates away, moves, comes to a halt, but because of the flexibility of that arm now, there's, a, there's an excitation, there's a, a bounce going on, and then it moves again, and there's another bounce, and again, and another bounce, and then again, and there's a bounce that decays away. So if you were designing this robot um, to have a very precise positioning of that, um, it, it may well lead you to having to... Um, change the time base. So if you need it to have decayed away, um, you might have, instead of making these uh, dwell phases, um, you know, of the order of a tenth of a second, it might need a full second to, to decay away so that you can do your positioning accurately, which will again drive the, the production time of whatever it is you're, you're assembling using this, um, this, this robot. So that's a um, quick overview of how to use Adam Flex and why you might want to consider using it in the, in the sorts of mechanisms that you design. Thank you.